Happy St. Patrick's Day. The Jets continue to make really smart moves that should excite this fan base. So let's break down the latest signings the Jets have made and look at what it means for the franchise going forward. Let's hit it and get it started. Hit it! Welcome in, everyone. My name is Jake Asman. This is the Jake Asman Show. <laughs> The Jets just had one of their greatest wins in the last 20-something years, and we're going to break it all down. Zach Wilson, Robert Sawa, C.J. Mosley, Joe Douglas, Elijah Moore, Makai Beckton, Michael Carter, Braxton Berrios. Super chat, you cut the line. Smash the like button down below. That's that thumbs-up icon. Now, let's talk about the New York Jets. Oh yeah, Jets having themselves quite an offseason. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Maybe the Jets finally have the luck of the Irish on their side. Let's break it down. Since I last posted a video, the Jets have made not one, but two really important signings to boost this roster, to boost this team. Let's start with what they did last night. They signed tight end Tyler Conklin to a three-year contract worth 13.5 million dollars this is a move that i was not expecting but this is a move that i am super excited about we know about cj uzama being one of their first signings that they made addressing tight end we all know how big of a need it was it's been a need for a decade the jets have not had an impact tight end since dustin keller left the team after the 2012 season but you bring in Con you bring in conklin to supplement uzama all of a sudden the jets went from having no tight ends to two reliable tight ends and if you just look at where this Jets team is right now between Uzama and Conklin if you combine their stats you have just added over 100 receptions and eight touchdowns in the tight end room I mean the Jets tight end position from a year ago and really the last couple of years has been an embarrassment Conklin comes in he's only 26 years old the Jets view him as a guy that is still an ascending player last year was his first true opportunity to actually get consistent playing time on the Vikings. And isn't it funny that the Vikings acquired Chris Herndon and the guy the Jets end up bringing in is Tyler Conklin, who played so well last year when the Vikings suffered injuries at the tight end spot. So you bring in Conklin to compliment Uzama, and it sets the Jets up now to run way more 12 personnel in Lafleur's offense, 12 personnel meaning two tight end sets on the field, and then you add Conklin with Uzama. See, the Jets needed playmakers. We talked a lot about number one wide receivers. They needed playmakers. Conklin is a playmaker. Uzama is a playmaker. They need to help Zach Wilson. Getting him not one but two reliable options over the middle certainly does that. And now you don't feel like you need to go tight end in the second round. You could wait till the third round, to the fourth round. If there's a guy you truly like, and the good news for the Jets, this tight end class, as we all know, is excellent. Yes, you have McBride. Yes, you have Weidemeyer. Yes, you have Ruckard. But I could keep going through a bunch of other guys that could make sense for the Jets, like Jake Ferguson, Charlie Collaire, um, you know, uh, Jelani Woods, Greg Dolchich. There's a lot of tight ends, and the Jets can now draft one. They don't need to feel like they have to reach to get one with one of their top 40 picks if they felt like that'd be a reach so it just gives joe douglas more options conklin is just a really good player the jets needed to do something like this and now you look at the offense and it's so much better than where it was at this time a year ago and where it was at the end of last season in the tight end room you have uzama and conklin at running back you got michael carter you bring back coleman you can now could draft another running back in the mid rounds at receiver you bring back Barrios, you have Moore and Davis. We all know the Jets are going to add a veteran wide receiver, and we all know that they're likely going to use a first-round pick, probably at number 10, on a number one wide receiver that they think will be cost-efficient. So the fact that they've been able to address the tight end position the way they did, it does alleviate the burden of not having that quote-unquote true number one. They just need as many good players as possible on offense, and bringing in Conklin to complement Uzama does exactly that. Now, the other signing the Jets have made, and they made this this morning. I woke up to the signing here in Houston, and there's nobody on the internet that is better to talk about Jacob Martin than me. I covered Jacob Martin down here with the Texans. The Texans acquired Jacob Martin in the Jadavian Clowney deal a couple of years ago. And to Jacob Martin's credit, 
He went from a guy that barely played that nobody had heard of to a guy that's actually a decent rotational rusher and actually had a pretty good season for the Houston Texans this past year. The Jets are giving Jacob Barton a three-year deal, which can be worth as much as $16.5 million. The reality is Rich Samidi tweeted out the details to the contract. It's basically a one-year deal that the Jets can get out of with some upside for a guy that I think is just ascending into a pretty good player. This guy had 32 hurries last year. If you take that number and compare it to guys that were on the Jets, that would be second on the Jets. John Franklin Myers led the Jets with 38 total hurries a year ago. So Jacob Martin had 32, and this is a guy that is now going to be a rotational piece on your defense. This is a guy that finally got full-time player snaps a year ago, and his 32 hurries were good for 25th most among edge rushers. And the guy only played in 391 pass rush snaps, which is 56 less than the closest player above him, according to the athletics. So you basically bring in a guy that has upside, that's going to be a nice rotational piece that you didn't have to break the bank for. So I think this is a very good signing by the Jets as well. It's not a superstar signing. You know, it's not Von Miller. It's not Chandler Jones, but it's a signing that the Jets can make that you feel like is going to address the depth. And we know that Salah loves to rotate defensive ends. That's perfect for a guy like Jacob Martin. So I think this is a good signing. And I can tell you a lot of Texans fans are a little confused why the Texans, who seemingly are bringing back everyone from their 4-13 and season a year ago, why they wouldn't want to bring back one of their better players from a season ago. By the way, on a side note, the fact that the Jets went out there and turned Blake Cashman into a sixth-round pick is truly remarkable. Now the Jets have a pick in the sixth round, and they took Blake Cashman, who got hurt walking, who, who would get hurt, you know, getting out of bed every morning. They got a sixth round pick for that guy. You know, I said the Jets might not be able to get anything greater than a sixth for Denzel Mims. I take that back. If Joe Douglas could get a fourth round pick for Chris Herndon, if Joe Douglas could get two ones and a third for Jamal Adams, a second and a fourth for Sam Darnold, and a sixth for Blake Cashman, maybe, just maybe, he could get a fifth or greater for Denzel Mims, who knows? And then the other point I want to bring up is by bringing Joe Flacco back, we talked about this on yesterday's show, the Jets recoup that, um, the Jets bring Flacco back, but by making the trade, I should say, for, for with Cashman sending him to the Texans, you got back that sixth-round pick you gave up for Flacco. So Douglas knows what he's doing. Has he been perfect as a GM? No, but there's a real plan in place. And I think if you're a Jet fan, you got to be very encouraged, very optimistic about where this team is at right now. So... I've been encouraged by the move so far. I really love, though, the Conklin signing. I just think it sends the right message to this team building around Zach Wilson. He went from having zero tight ends to two, and now you probably cut Ryan Griffin, save money there, and you draft the tight end from round three on. And I think that the Jets are in a really good shape. So just to recap here, Jacob Martin signing, thumbs up. Tyler Conklin signing, thumbs up. Love the fact they brought back Joe Flacco. They're probably going to have Mike White back. They tendered him. So the quarterback room is set. There's good There's good cohesion there. Uh, you, you, there's good continuity there. And now when you look ahead to what the Jets will do in NFL free agency, what's left, look for more kind of value signings like what they did with Jacob Martin. The Jets certainly could use another safety. They obviously would like to bring in more pass rush help, and they're going to add a veteran wide receiver. I don't think it's going to be – Allen Robinson, but I think they're going to be, you know, bringing in that Keelan Cole type of player once again uh, for this offense. And obviously, you look ahead to the draft, the Jets are still going to prioritize pass rush as they should. So I, I think if you're a Jet fan, you should be very encouraged by what we have seen so far uh, from Joe Douglas and company. They got a real plan in place, they haven't overpaid. And for those who want a salary cap update, according to Connor Hughes's calculating, and if he's wrong, blame Connor, don't blame me. He thinks the Jets have roughly about $35 million still to use in salary cap. That's why you don't just look at the APY for each player. You got to calculate signing bonuses, how they spread out the cap hit over a couple of years. Essentially, the Jets have pushed a lot of these higher cap numbers in their signings to 2023, meaning they could still take on a big salaried player this year in a trade or with a, a big signing. So I don't think it totally eliminates the Jets from like a Jadavian Clowney move or from a move like, let's say, Allen Robinson, although I think Robinson seems unlikely given what we know 
about the Jets. So those are my initial thoughts. I think they're having a great offseason so far. I really do. You guys know me. If I thought the Jets were doing you know, poorly or having a bad offseason, I'd be the first to criticize them. So when the Jets do something right, they deserve credit for it. And I think so far it has been encouraging as we kind of get to, you know, wave two, wave three of free agency. But so far, so good. And if you're a Jet fan, you certainly should be encouraged by what we have seen thus far. With that being said, I want to open it up to your comments and questions. I see a lot of you are watching this live right now. A lot of you, obviously, I'm sure have strong opinions, strong thoughts on the Jets. We'll open it up to your comments and questions here. If you have a super chat, you'll cut the line. I'm going to try and get to those first, as I always do. A lot happening with the Jets. Look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts. Before we do that, though, last chance to make a BUSR account before the NCAA tournament really begins in about, what, 18 minutes from now as I sit here and do this video live. If you want in on the $1 to win $10,000 contest, all you have to do is go to BUSR.com slash Asman, sign up and log into your account, make your deposit, and place a $1 bet or more on any of these NCAA games, and boom, you are participating to win the contest. The winner is going to be announced on the 26th. That's the day of the Elite Eight. BUSR also has a contest for the bracket pool. Got my bracket right here. So get ready. Tournament's back. Madness is back. You guys know BUSR has been my official sports book now the last couple months. Pumped up about our partnership. And there's still time to sign up. Even if the tournament begins and you're watching this later, make an account. If you want to bet on the NCAA tournament like, I don't know, everyone in America does, do it with BUSR, BUSR.com slash as when you see it on the screen link is in the description for the video sign up today busr.com slash asman let's see what you guys are thinking let's open it up comments questions here we go benji checks in with a super chat jake with all these holes being filled in free agency how about edge at four dean or lloyd at 10 and a wide receiver in round two deep wide receiver class and we desperately need a linebacker. Benji, they desperately need, though, a number one wide receiver, and I value getting the best over waiting to see what's there in the second round. I want the Jets to take a receiver with the 10th pick, and as far as linebacker, there will be guys in the second round they could use a pick on. They could take uh, Muma, let's say, in round two. I don't think they're going to go tight end now in round two. Could they still maybe take Trey McBride at 38? Yeah, if they love him, why not? I'm not against that because you got to think long-term about that position, not just in the short term. But I think with the moves the Jets have made, they're not as in desperate need to take a Trey McBride or Jeremy Ruckert in round two. Hell, maybe one of those guys is there in round three, and then you get even better value on one of those players. We'll find out. Richard says they should still get McBride at 38. If they love him and think he's that good, I am not against that idea, Richard. I just think the Jets now have way more flexibility to do different things than maybe they would have at the beginning of free agency. So I am, uh, I'm very encouraged by, by what this team has done so far. I think if you're a jet fan, you should be optimistic about where things are at with this team. Super chats cut the line. As you guys know, this comment here is from Steve. Great to see Joe D continue to add depth on both sides of the ball. We finally have an adult in the room at, with the GM role. And it gives me hope that we're finally turning the corner. It takes time, but there is a real plan in place. A real plan in place. Flex flexibility continues to be a big thing for the Jets. If you notice with all these deals, they're about two-year commitments as far as like guaranteed money. So the Jets are going to continue to have like cap flexibility to improve this team going forward. And as we all know, the salary cap is fake. So the Jets can manipulate it and continue to add good players, especially if Zach Wilson's good and they're not paying him any money because he's on a rookie contract. Nubian Alien with a super chat. He cuts the line. What up, Nubian? Is there a trade you could see the Jets making for a big name? Daniel Hunter, still out there. Defensive ends. We know the Jets are desperate for an edge rusher. I think he's the guy to look at if you want to talk about a potential trade. Frosty Taco says, Hughes says he expects a big trade for us. Who do you think it is and who do you think comes on draft day? I think it could be Daniel Hunter. And then obviously draft day, I, I think the Jets are going to take a pass rusher at four and they're going to take a receiver at 10. Nothing they've done in free agency would uh, would change from that point on. Michael says, can we say Chris Olave, wide receiver, Ohio State at 10? I think the Jets will value Garrett Wilson more than Olave, but let me tell you, there is uh, there is more of an emphasis on, 
on Olave than there has been in previous days. I was talking to a scout the other day that had Olave and Garrett Wilson as his top two receivers. So we'll see how it plays out. Uh, Chris says Daniel Hunter time. Potentially, uh, you know, potentially. I, I, I'm not against that. Uh, B. Nelson says, Jake, it's a sixth in 2023 for Cashman. Regardless, it's a sixth round pick. And the fact that the Jets got anything for Blake Cashman, who gets hurt getting out of bed, is honestly pretty amazing. Uh, let's see. Gronkland is what Vikings fans called him. Guy's a beast. Guy's a beast. If you watch the Vikings at all, he was a big part of their offense this year. Once again, this stat about the Jets' tight end room now is remarkable. All right. The Jets' tight end room between Uzama and Conklin. They now have added over 100 catches, 110 in total, and eight touchdowns of production. I mean, it's just stupid. It is silly how much better the Jets are in that room, and they had to. Joe Douglas dropped the ball a year ago, not getting Zach Wilson a better tight end, not giving Mike LaFleur a better tight end to operate with. But you know, the, 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 the moves they have made have been incredibly encouraging. I mean, Uzama, Conklin, Tomlinson, Whitehead, Reed, all good players and all players that you didn't have to overpay for. You know, I work with a, uh, I, I work with someone here in Houston named Paul Gallant, who worked in Seattle the last two years as their morning drive host on an ESPN station there. He's now our midday show host on ESPN Houston, but he covered the Seahawks. It's the first thing he says to me yesterday when I walked into the studio, you guys are going to love DJ Reed. The way he plays, we loved him in Seattle. Jet fans, you guys are going to love his attitude. I'm like, great. And they didn't overpay to get him. So Douglas and Sala continue to make smart signings here. Zach Wilson's watching. Hello, Zach. Assuming you know Martin because he comes from Houston, seems like a good backup along with Hup. I love the depth. You like Martin. I love Martin. I think Martin's a great signing by the Jets. Good depth piece. Think Bryce Huff, that type of player. Now, do they still need an edge at four? Yeah, but... You can never have enough good pass rushers, and the Jets' defensive line, if Carl Lawson is healthy, is arguably a top-10 unit if they end up with a good edge at number four. Maybe a top-five unit, even. Mike said, this this signing does show J.D. said they're being flexible and active in free agency. They have a lot of flexibility, and they continue to have flexibility year over year. None of these contracts are going to prohibit the Jets from still being aggressive and making more trades going forward. Armani with the super chat. He cuts the line. Hey, Jake, what do you think about trading for Danielle Hunter from the Vikings? Dude's a beast. As always, thanks for the great content. I guess it depends on the cost, Armani. But if you look at what the Jets have done, they have the, the flexibility to add a, a, you know, a guy like him to the team. I'm not against it. Joshua says, Jake, I live in Houston. I want to see one of your shows live. Joshua, I don't know what you're doing the next two days, man. But I'm going to be live today at Revelry on Richmond from 3 to 7. We're doing the radio show from one of my favorite sports bars in the city today. It's going to be nuts with the Watson news and Correa potential news and obviously March Madness. And then tomorrow, we're going to be at Drift Bar in the Heights. So if anyone is in Houston and wants to come out and say hello, Revelry on Richmond today. This is Thursday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. And then tomorrow, Friday, March 18th, Drift Bar in the Heights. We got two live shows over the next two days. Aaron says, people don't realize how big the signing of Conklin and Uzama is. Will help Zach tremendously in the short passing game. Conklin is a solid blocker. Both guys are really good blockers, which is why the Jets also like them a lot, Aaron. Also, the other thing to take, in, take note of here is, you know, Zach Wilson had some issues, not so much back half of the year, but early in the year. He had some issues with the underneath stuff. I think it's going to help him knowing that he's got guys over the middle that are always open, that are sure-handed, that are really going to help. Like Zach Wilson's completion percentage has to be drastically better in year two, and signings like Uzama and Conklin are certainly going to help the Jets. Uh, let's see. Keep going with your comments and questions. As you guys know, Super Chats will, in fact, cut the line. Budster says, we will never beat Buffalo with all their improvements like Von Miller. Um, you're not worried about beating Buffalo. You're worried about, I don't know, actually having meaningful games to play in December. The Bills are the best team in the division. They got the best quarterback. They got a great roster. They're in win down mode. The Jets are still built. You don't have to be better than the Bills just yet. You got to take you got to take steps going forward where you could get to their level eventually. They're not there just yet. And 
The Bills didn't become the Bills until Josh Allen became the player he is today in year three. Zach Wilson's going into year two. They got to continue to help him so he can reach that potential that Allen obviously has. Carl says, I'm high on Linderbaum. Get a young center for Wilson to grow with. I think they're going to stick with McGovern, but I but if they took Linderbaum, I'm not going to kill them for it. I'm really not. I think the guy's going to be a beast. You guys know my thoughts on Linderbaum if you've been watching the show. Rise of the Jets wants to know, what will they do at four if Hutchinson and Thibodeau are gone? Do they select Neil or Aquano? Jermaine Johnson, Trayvon Walker, Carl Loftus, and Sauce all a reach at four. They're not all a reach at four. I think the Jets would still take a pass rusher there. I think it would be Walker or Jermaine Johnson. I don't think they're going to take Sauce Gardner at four. Um, Let's see. John says, do you think the Jets should still go after McBride in the draft? If they truly think he's a difference-making tight end, then I'm not against it. I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think the Jets now take tight end till round three or four because they realize how good of a tight end uh, class it is. Edward says, how did you become a New York Jets fan? Through my dad. Through my dad. My dad was a season ticket holder with my grandpa at Shea Stadium, my dad's favorite player. You guessed it, Joe Namath. So that's how I became a Jet fan. I grew up uh, on Long Island as well, so I would always go to Hofstra every summer for training camp. Steve says, any thoughts on the veteran wide receiver we bring in free agency? Um, Keelan Cole. I would not be surprised if they bring him back. I think they could do better than him, but you look at what's out there, it's not really a stacked wide receiver group that's left. The Jets are probably going to end up with two receivers in the draft, one at 10 and then probably another one in the third or fourth round. Milton says, if the Jets pass on Jermaine Johnson, Walker, or Carl Optus at four, and they get taken at six or seven, is reaching at four for them really that big of a deal? No, it's not, Milton, because ultimately, if you love the player, just take the player. Don't mess around. Don't mess around. See, like, the Jets are going to get the benefit of the doubt, I think, from the fan base, no matter which edge they take at number four, because we're going to we're gonna lean on Douglas and Salah's acumen at identifying that position especially Salah, who knows what a good defensive lineman looks like. So if they if they took Walker at four or Jermaine Johnson at four, I won't crush them for it. Now, my preference would be Thibodeau, but I don't know if Thibodeau is going to make it to four. I think he could go number three to the Texans. He can go number two to the Lions because it sounds like the Jags are going to take Hutchinson one, which kind of throws a wrench into the idea of Thibodeau making it to four, but we shall see. Duncan says, are you worried about the lack of flexibility in 2023 with cap money being pushed there? No, I'm not, Duncan, because the cap is fake. It's a lot like the sub the Subway $5 footlong. It's not real. It doesn't exist. It's a figment of your imagination. The Saints are about to maybe get to Sean Watson. They were in cap hell. It doesn't make any sense. The Falcons are in on Deshaun Watson. They got a $50 million dead cap hit if they trade Matt Ryan. It's just it's not real. If you're a good team, you can figure out a way to manipulate the cap down the line. It's fake. It's not real. It's a woozy, wazzy, whatever McConaughey said in Wolf of Wall Street. Matt says, miss the Watson news. Is there a deal? As of 10.54 a.m. Central time, Deshaun Watson is still a Texan. He will be traded, my guess is, by end of day tomorrow, Friday. But he is still a Texan right now. The Browns are out. We're down to three for Deshaun. Atlanta. Carolina, and New Orleans. Bidding war between three teams in the same division. Martin says, we need linebackers. They will address linebackers. I think they also need another safety. Matthew says, Martin could play linebacker as well. He could, but you're going to use him as a, as an, a, on, on the outside. You're going to use him in the 4-3 defense, the Jets run. You're going to use him on the outside. D. Jones says, which wide receiver is best fit at 10? I've become a Garrett Wilson guy. I think he's the most complete wide receiver in the class. Keep it simple, says, hey, Jake, do you see J.D. signing guys on the other side of 30? Probably not, based on what we have seen so far. Keep it simple. Super chat from Maddie cuts the line. I know we're talking about improving positions rather than plugging holes. If draft works out well, we have to trade future. We have trade future trade value, too. I don't know exactly what that means, Matt, but your point about the Jets need to continue to draft well is well taken. Be infamous with a super chat. How about linebacker Lloyd at 10, then wide receiver Watson or Pickens around two? 
Great contact as always, Jay. I think you mean contact. Appreciate you being infamous. Um, I just I don't love taking a linebacker at 10. I rather get Garrett Wilson. I'm not messing around. As much as I like Christian Watson and George Pickens, I, I'm not messing around. Just give me the best, give me the best player at 10 that's a wide receiver, or I'll trade back a couple spots if I can get extra picks. So then, then I could grab another one of these wide receivers in the second round as well. I want receiver at 10. As much as I like Devin Lloyd, the linebacker from Utah, I want a receiver at 10 right now. John says, would you trade the 10th pick back to the Seahawks for Metcalf? I just, it's not, here we go with the Metcalf. He's not being traded to the Jets. It's not happening. Noah says, I think there's a possibility of moving up from four. I don't think the Jets are going to trade, trade up from, from four to three, two or one. They're not going to trade picks. That's not a Douglas move. They would trade back from four. I think I think the options for the Jets at four, if I'm ranking them, edge, trade back, Sauce Gardner. I, I do not think they're going to take a Neal or a Quano at this point. That's just my that's my feeling today, subject to change. Tony Bear says, hey, Jake, I know this is unrelated to the Jets, but the Texans traded for Cashman. What can you tell me about him? Tony, it is not unrelated. It is all related. Uh, look. I got to be honest, Tony, I am shocked Casario wanted to trade any sort of draft pick for Blake Cashman. The guy gets hurt getting out of bed. He's played like 14 games the last three years. Now, when he's played, he's actually flashed potential. He's never healthy, though, so I'm shocked that the Jets were able to get anything for him. But Casario's been weird with his moves, man. His drafts have been good, but I don't understand why he's always willing to trade late-round picks. He did it last year, too, and it never made any sense. Like, he gave away a fifth-round pick for – um you know, the Anthony Miller, the receiver they got in the trade with the Bears, just to cut him in a couple of weeks. He traded a seventh round pick for that, you know, crappy backup Ryan Finley just to cut him after a month. He just trades away draft picks like they don't mean anything. And I know they're late round picks, but Casario, to his credit, without a first or a second round pick a year ago, hit on all five of his draft picks, whether it be Davis Mills in the third round or Nico Collins and Brevin Jordan in rounds four and five or Roy Lopez in the sixth round or Garrett Wallow in, I think, the sixth round as well. He, I don't know why he's so uh, so just like willing to just part with draft picks. Nick says, do you think Carl Lawson is going to be the same player? I think he's going to be rusty to start, Nick, which is why the Jets need to continue to add to that defensive line. 1189 Paris says Aquano is going to be drafted by the Jaguars if they're smart. Neil lost 30 pounds from his college playing weight, which is a red flag. I don't know if that's a red flag, 1189. And it sounds like Jacksonville is going to go edge at number one. So we'll see. The Real J says, what about the running back room? The Jets need to continue to add to that room. They'll draft the running back, my guess, in, you know, from round three on. That's my guess. Um, we know about Michael Carter. They brought back Coleman, which I thought was smart. They need to continue to add to that running back room. Seamus says, what about moving back and getting Olave in the middle of the first? I like that strategy, Seamus. I guess it just depends on how far back you're moving back and what you're getting. I don't want to move back just for the sake of moving back. If I'm moving back, I want to get at least an extra second-round pick this year, uh, some picks next year. Uh, like It depends. It all depends. Daniil Hunter is still a possibility third and fourth this year in a 2023 fourth. Pair over the cap. We can convert salary cap, make the hit around thirteen million in twenty in twenty twenty two, and around fourteen million in twenty twenty three. Then go sauce and a wide receiver in the first. Don't hate it, Harold. Here's the thing I would say about the Jets and salary cap: they have plenty of it. All right, if they need to save ten million dollars, they can restructure C.J. Mosley's contract. They could cut uh, Greg Van Roten. They could cut Ryan Griffin. The Jets have so much money. Don't worry about their salary cap. They got plenty of money. How are all these teams making moves? Like, the Jets have money. They have more money than any of these teams. They just haven't spent it yet. They've been smart. Gary says, enough with the Metcalf. I'm so sick of the Metcalf stuff. He's not going to be a Jet. I would love to be wrong. If he's wrong, I'll come on this show and I'll say, I was wrong. The Jets got DK. It's not happening, though. Sam says, the Kobe Dean at 10 or bust. Bust. I'm not taking the Kobe Dean at 10. No, thank you. Ray says, I'd love Watson in round two, but I doubt they don't take a receiver in round one. The Jets are going to go receiver in round one. It's a matter of, do they do it at 10? Do they trade back? Do they trade back into round one? I'd be surprised. 
Shane says, Jake Steelers just signed Miles Jack. Why not possibly trade back either four or ten with Pittsburgh for more picks and Devin Bush? Why would the Steelers want to give you Devin Bush? If anything, they added Miles Jack to pair with Devin Bush and to make that uh, that defense much better. Noah says, are one of the seconds getting moved? It depends on the trade. It depends on the trade. Rise of the Jets says, what is your opinion of free agent wide receiver Byron Pringle? 27, had a breakout year, five touchdowns, 568 receiving yards. How much of that is um, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? That's my only thing. Now, as far as a depth signing, I'm good with it. But I'm just weary of those numbers. I don't think he's doing that on the Jets. Chris says, go to BUSR. Bet the over on the Saints win total. Why would Deshaun go to Atlanta? Nothing there now. Post-trade, there would really be nobody. Well, he would go to Atlanta because, one, he's from there. Two, he used to be a Falcons ball boy. A lot of people don't know that. He's got a very close relationship with Arthur Blank, the Falcons owner. So Arthur Blank would stand by him when Deshaun is going to be suspended for four to six games at least next year. And I don't know, Kyle Pitts, maybe they sign Jarvis Landry after he's there. The division's wide open. Clemson's not that far from Atlanta. There's a lot of people in Atlanta that are huge Deshaun Watson fans. Um, that's why. And, and also, Atlanta, like the, the thing with Deshaun Watson that people don't understand, it's not about just this year. If it was about winning just this year, he probably goes to Cleveland because they were the best team that's in on him. Deshaun Watson's 26 years old, signed for the next four years. This is about the next 10 years. Like, you're giving up a lot of picks to get Deshaun, but now you have a franchise quarterback for a decade. That's why it's not about just this year. So, that's the thing. JD says, 600 viewers and only 50 likes hit it. Damn, that is pathetic. Only 50 likes? Come on, people. The Jets are doing good. Luck of the Irish, St. Patrick's Day. Smash the like button down below. That will help this channel continue to grow. And as the channel grows, we'll have more Jets-related content and other content that you guys enjoy. And maybe to inspire those to hit the like button, let's hear from the man, the myth, the legend, Ron Middleton. Moves, hit it! If it don't move, hit it! And if you're not sure, guess what? Yeah. Hit it. yeah, hit the like button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Let me plug the contest because this seems to be the only way to get you guys to really engage with the channel. I'm doing a contest. If you're new to the show, I'm giving away a black Elijah Moore size large jersey. I'm doing it at the end of the month. Ron, diehard Jet fan, sent me a jersey. He bought an extra one. He said, hey, why don't you give it away on the show? So that's what I'm doing. You must be subscribed to the channel. You must like this video and then follow me on my Twitter and Instagram. It's just my name, Jake Asman, A-S-M-A-N. Follow me there. And as I see the follows come in, I then take out my phone, add your name to my list, and then I'm going to pick a random name at the end of the month. So that's the Elijah Moore jersey giveaway contest that we're doing. Appreciate you guys for supporting the show. Also, Paul mentions, Jake, you're forgetting the work done. Yeah, that's also a great point, Paul. Thank you. Deshaun Watson's childhood home was paid for by former Falcons running back work done. So there's a lot of reasons why Deshaun would feel like uh, feel a connection to the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Super Chat coming in here. Let's bring this in from Joshua. Edge at four and center at 10 if London and Burks or Olave slide trade up. If not, best available receiver at 35. I don't think they're going to go center at 10. If they trade back Joshua, they're in play for Linderbaum. I, I truly believe that. Cole Beasley got cut. Someone's saying, watch Beasley go to Tampa. That would honestly make a lot of sense. Let's see. James says, Jake, Joe Douglas is a GM god for us. I don't know how he put off a trade for Blake Cashman. I don't know how he did either. I like Joe Douglas. He still has to crush this draft. All right. We all like what they've done so far. Even if you're a, an anti, you know, or, or a very cynical Jet fan, which you have good reason to be, especially if you're an older Jet fan. We all like what they've done so far, but now they got to continue to add depth pieces and then go out there in the draft and absolutely crush it. Super chat here from Dimitri. Are Garrett Wilson and Drake London rated higher than the wide receiver the Jets drafted in the second round last year? It's a good question, Dimitri. I don't know because the wide receiver the Jets drafted in the first round in the second round last year should not have been in the second round. This guy 
is going to end up being arguably their best offensive player for years to come, in my opinion, in Elijah Moore. So Elijah Moore was the Jets' 16th rated player a year ago. They were going to take him at 23 if they didn't make the trade up to get AVT. The Jets told us that after the draft. So Elijah Moore was a top 16 graded player for them. So let's see if Garrett Wilson or Drake London are top 10 graded players for them. If they take one of them at 10, they are. That's how Joe Douglas does his draft. Kevin says, hit it. Hell yeah. I think they absolutely should go DE at four, Tibbs or Jermaine Johnson. My preference is Thibodeau, but I'm good with obviously Jermaine Johnson if the Jets are good with him. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that. I'm not going to pretend like I'm a Jermaine Johnson expert. I'm not. So that, that's the big thing. Uh, you see some Jet fans here want Cole Beasley. I, I'm i good. I think the Jets have enough slot, guys. Um, let's see. Chris says, great Deshaun points, Jake. I get it now. Thanks. Yeah, Deshaun's connected to Atlanta. That's why he's considering them. I think if he, I, I think it's going to be between the Saints and the Falcons when push comes to shove. I'm going to, Matt Rule's a bumbling buffoon. So I would not want to play for him if I'm Deshaun Watson. I mean, that guy, that guy decided to pick up Sam Darnold's fifth year option before watching him play football. Have fun with Sam for $20 million. By the way, any Sam truthers still out there? You know how royally F the Jets would have been if they stuck with Sam? What were they doing at quarterback now? Just throwing that out there. Dottori says, if they got Daniel Hunter, who would you take with the fourth or would you trade down? Um, If Thibodeau's on the board, I might still take him, guys. You can never have enough edge rushers. And Carl Lawson's contract, you can get out of after one more year. You always got to think in two years increments. Take the best player. If one of the edges is there, I don't think that stops you. The Jets rotate defensive linemen. Or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, the, the, the Jets rotate guys. Imagine a D-line of Hunter, Thibodeau, and Lawson. Why not? Siegel says, if you're known for contested catches in college, it means you're never open. We need good route runners. Get open, catch the ball, let's go. I disagree with that. Drake London is open. There's a narrative about him that I think is untrue. We'll we'll get Will Parkinson on the show again. He's a USC fan and a Jet fan, so we could talk more about Drake London. But I, I, I just think Garrett Wilson's better than Drake London. I think he's the more complete player. Uh, let's see. We, we've reached the part of the conversation where we're, we're naming punters for the Jets to maybe pick. They have a punter. They used a draft pick on a punter a couple of years ago, John. They're not going to pick another punter. Anyone else nervous about KT or is it just getting blown up? I think it's overblown. I really do. You could be a diva at defensive end if you get after the quarterback. I don't really care. If the Jets pass on Thibodeau, he's going to go to the Giants. He's going to be the next Strahan, OC, Tuck, or JPP. Don't let that happen. I'll continue to say it. Uh, David says, I think you're delusional picking a wide receiver at 10. Wide receivers have the biggest bust rate than any other position. Only two rookies last year had 1,000-plus yards. We run two tight end sets 65% of the time. You think I'm delusional for wanting the Jets to try and get a number one wide receiver for their young quarterback going, in the second, going into their second year? David, I could not disagree with you more. All right? If the Jets think Garrett Wilson's that guy or Olave's that guy or Drake London's that guy, Take him. You don't draft the guy thinking that the player is going to be a bust. You draft the guy because you trust your GM. And Joe Douglas's track record in the draft has overall been very good, specifically with Salah. It was a home run last year. So they're not delusional. They took a receiver at 10, and they still could trade back from 10 and end up with a receiver. That's in play as well. Harold says, Drake is excellent, releases off the line. He can get open. Watch the tape. Don't believe the narrative. It's a weird narrative. It's a very weird narrative. Um, Tibbs is not a diva. Seems like a good dude. I like him, man. Watch his interviews. Watch his interviews. The guy's a beast. The guy came back from injury this year when he could have just mailed it in and went to the draft and been a top five pick. He also didn't play opposite another NFL rusher that's going to go in the top 15. As much as I love Aiden Hutchinson, you don't think he benefited from playing opposite David Ajabo? Um, let's see. Steve says, I think four and 10 will get us Hamilton and Carl off this 34 and 38 big body wide receiver and best tight end available. I don't think they're going to go tight end in the second round now, Steve, not after they signed Conklin yesterday. 
And Hamilton at four, no thank you. They better not. Carl Optus at 10, I'll listen to. But then they got to figure out a way to address wide receiver. But Hamilton at four, no thank you. No thank you. They should sign another safety. There's still some decent depth pieces that are out there. How much do you think the 2020 draft was influenced by Gase? Influenced, yes. You don't you don't give Douglas a pass for the 2020 draft. And by the way, the 2020 draft is not that bad if they hit on Makai Becton. If Makai Becton's back and is healthy and plays like what he did as a rookie, you salvage that draft by getting your, your stud tackle for your young quarterback for years to come. Jets Forever says Edge at four is not the Super Bowl move. Well, the Jets aren't going to be in the Super Bowl next year, Jets Forever. I hate to break that to you. They're not a Super Bowl team. But if they take an edge at four, they could drastically improve their defense. And you want the secondary to be better, to quote Robert Sala? Fix the pass rush. Keith says, that stunt that Tibbs pulled at the combine is 100% inexcusable. Just saying. It's really not, Keith. Let's not overreact. If he runs all his drills at his pro day, does it really matter? Does it really matter? Mark says, if the dislike of Tibbs is overblown, he won't be there at four. Is Walker or Johnson a reach at four? Is Sauce at four too much? I don't think a pass rusher at four is a reach, especially if there's hype that Walker is a top five player on some GM's big boards. And Johnson, I know the Jets like too. They coached him at the Senior Bowl. That would tell you a lot. If the Jets took Jermaine Johnson, that would tell you a lot about what they think about him, and they have an inside knowledge on him. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. Ryan says, Jake, rank your top three signings and give me one more free agent you still want. Uh, so top three signings the Jets have made. Number one, I would say Lakin Tomlinson. I just love the flexibility it now gives the Jets at the top of the draft. Number two, re-signing Braxton Berrios. You guys have known I've been a big Braxton guy for a very, very long time. And then number three, I mean, I'm going to say Conklin because Uzama was great, but to, to then double down, and get another tight end and add now a combined over 100 uh, catches and eight touchdowns to your room, I feel like those are the three signings that I love the most. So, you know, honestly, I could argue for each one, though. I really could. Like, obviously, bringing in Whitehead was a good move. Bringing in Reed was a good move. I love what they did with Jacob Martin today. I know a lot of Jet fans probably didn't watch Jacob Martin like I did covering the Texans for a living. Jacob Martin's a decent player. And I'm confused why Nick Casario didn't bring him back. The Texans have brought back almost everyone from a team that went 4-13 and a year ago, except Martin, who was actually a pretty good player. So I don't understand that one. B. Nelson says, um, what do you think, think the Super Bowl move is at four edges premier position? Yeah, you know what's not a Super Bowl move? Taking a safety at four. You know what is a Super Bowl move? Taking a premier position and edge rusher at number four. I mean, come on, man. Anything the Jets do in the draft, they're not going to the Super Bowl this year. Sorry, the Jets are not going to be the Bengals. All right, I hate to break it to you guys. That was like a once-in-a-blue-moon scenario. But they could be an eight-win team next year. They could be a team that's playing meaningful games into the month of December. And if Zach Wilson's good and takes a big leap in year two, they could be battling for a playoff spot. That's not crazy. You see it in the NFL all the time. Dirty Boy cuts the line with the Super Chat. Do these free agent signings hint a playoff push? Hint a playoff push, maybe hint at a playoff push, I believe you mean. They should be playing meaningful games into the month of December. If they're not, that's a failure. That's how I look at it. Barring you know an unforeseen situation, if the Jets are not playing meaningful games in December, the season was a failure, period. They still have all these draft picks. They're in year two with a coach, year two of a quarterback. The Jets need to go from a team that won four games a year ago to a team that is at least an eight-win football team um, in 2022. I think that's a, a low end expectation. So they should be in the hunt. They should be in the hunt on the graphic late in December. Mad Genius says, would you trade up with the Texans if Tibbs is, is left? It depends how the Jets feel about Thibodeau and what do the Texans want? I think the Texans could just take Thibodeau if he's there at three. So we'll see. The real Jay says, are we not after Robinson? He's only like 28. It would it would be a surprise if the Jets signed Allen Robinson at this point. It would be a surprise. Brawley says, hopefully Zach has a breakout year. We can only hope. We can only hope. So Crate says, Jake Asman, how is Joe Douglas so goddamn good? He's got a plan. He's executing it. Now he's got to hit on the draft picks. Good start. 
Michelle says brisket at 35 Pickens at 38. That would be an awesome draft. If they took uh brisket, this, or I think you mean it's not brisket though. It's brisker. This is not a, uh, you know, a, a Texas barbecue that we're talking about here in the draft. Jaquan brisker at 35 and then George Pickens at 38. That would be awesome for the jets. They still need a receiver though in round one, in my opinion, but if they doubled up on wide receiver, you're not going to hear me complain about that. They also need a linebacker as well. Hey, Jake, watching you from beautiful Punta Cana. Thanks, Richard. I hope you're enjoying your vacation. I'm assuming you're on vacation. Sam says Elijah Moore is a one. He could be. We don't know that yet. So stop. So don't stop adding good players to help Zach Wilson. Nick says not could. The Jets already are an eight-win team. Not yet. Not without a draft, Nick. They got to hit the they got to hit on some players in the draft. John checks in. Traylon Burks is the most overrated wide receiver in the draft. He's going to go in the first round. I don't think he's overrated. I just don't know if he's going to be the first wide receiver taken like some thought he could be. Uh, AM says, happy St. Patrick's Day, Mr. McAsman. <laughs> happy St. Patrick's Day. I'll be drinking my Bushmills Irish whiskey later today. Bushmills Irish whiskey. You got to drink the liquid history since 1608. Uh I, they sponsor my radio show, so I'm a big Bushmills Irish whiskey guy. Um, let's see. Dan says, cherry on top if we get a decent receiver during free agency. They're not done. They're not done. They will add a wide receiver. I just think it's going to be one of those moves that they make probably at like a you know, low cost, Keelan Cole type, $5 million per year, and then they'll, they'll draft the receiver. The Jets are clearly – I didn't love this – but since they have at least signed it, signed two competent tight ends, I love the fact that um, you know they they are not as dependent on number one wide receiver, number one wide receiver. They need they need playmakers, and they've added playmakers with two good tight ends so far. Johnny says, "Would the Jets kick the tires on Julio Jones with an incentive laden deal?" Julio Jones is thirty three. He's coming off a terrible season, and he missed seven games with injury. Jets aren't touching Julio Jones. I don't want them to sign Julio Jones. Chaka says, sauce at four, edge at 10. Christian Watson, 35-38. Chaka, thanks for the super chat, and that would be awesome. That would be awesome if, if the Jets truly believe Sauce Gardner's that good at four. That would show me a lot because we know the Jets don't value that corner position like maybe other teams. So we'll see. I My preference would be pass rush at four and then receiver at 10. Christian Watson at 35 or 38, the Jets better feel like he's a stud. He better, they better feel like he's Elijah Moore. So we'll see. They could trade back into round one to get their receiver too. Don't count that out. The Jets have two second round picks this year. They got all their picks next year. They could go in your mock here, Chaka. They could go sauce for, let's say, Jermaine Johnson at 10 and then trade into round one for a receiver. James says, Jake, are you still giving away the parts on known link? If we follow you on IG or Twitter, James DM me and I got you. I got you. Blake with a random question. Hey, Jake, do you think St. Louis will get another NFL team? They should. They got totally screwed losing the Rams. No doubt about that. George says, how do you feel about Jake Ferguson or Jelani Woods day three? I like both. Jelani Woods is six foot seven. He hasn't played a lot. He, he This was his first year truly playing at. Uh, Virginia Tech, so we'll see. Get the Honey Badger. It's going to be expensive. I don't know if the Jets are going to go down that path. He's 29 years old. Doesn't seem like a Joe Douglas move, but they were in on him. They probably still in or are in on Honey Badger, so we'll see. D. Jones says, I think Christian Watson goes late one. He certainly could, but you never know. There's going to be someone that is going to slip around too. No one thought Elijah Moore was there at pick 34 a year ago, so who's this year's Elijah Moore? We'll find out. Joey with the super chat, seeing the way JD has been fleecing the NFL so far, I see him snagging the best wide receiver in the draft, Jamison Williams, at the end of the first round. If they did that, I'd be happy. Uh, Jamison Williams is the beast, man. I don't care if he tore his ACL. All right, you know how many guys come back from torn ACLs? Like Chris Godwin tore his ACL, and he still got a three-year, $60 million contract extension from the Bucs. He tore his ACL in November. Like ACLs are not career enders. They're just not. Adam says, where was this Joe D when I was in charge? Hello, Adam Gase. Well, 
Gotta be honest with you, Adam. Joe Douglas knew you were gone. He just had to wait for he just had to get through the 2020 season to get your ass out of town. Obi-Wan checks in. Any idea that the Jets are in on any free agent linebackers? They better be, Obi-Wan. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Alex says you're gonna talk about everything else but defensive tackle. Defensive tackle, Alex, is in play with one of the second round picks. It's a good defensive tackle draft. The kid from UConn, kid from Houston. There's guys. Michelle says, Falcons going to take wide receiver at eight. Wilson probably will be gone. Uh, if the Falcons have Deshaun Watson, that's not their pick. And I don't think the Texans would draft a receiver on the top 10. So we'll see. Depends on where the Falcons are. Are the Jets looking into Devontae Adams? No, he got franchise tagged. Come on. Sergio says, Jamison Williams is not a top tier receiver. He's getting the Jerry Judy effect. Strongly disagree. Watch Jamison Williams. That guy's a special talent. Big Daddy says, keep on hitting it, Jake. What do you think about taking an edge at four, wide receiver at 10 and 35? At four and 10, that's my path right now if I'm the Jets. I'm going edge and then receiver. At 35, if they think Christian Watson is like a top 16 player like they thought Elijah Moore was a year ago, and he's there. Elijah Moore was rated 16 by the Jets a year ago. They got him at 34. If Watson is that high, and he could be because the Jets watched him up close at the Senior Bowl, if Watson is that high on their big board and they took him at 35, no complaints. No complaints. Can we please get Bobby Wagner? I don't think they're going to get Bobby Wagner. He's 32 years old. I was told by someone that covers the Seahawks, Bobby Wagner, the name, is a lot better than the Bobby Wagner, the player, right now. Are the Jets looking into Jamal Adams? <laughs> uh, have fun on Jets Northwest, Jamal. Johnny says, Cole Strange, day three for some O-line depth. Yeah, we've talked about him before with Cole Thompson on the show. Adam Gase checks in. Robert Sala looks sober when talking to the media. What's that about? He spends time with his family, Adam. Drew checks in with a 99-cent super chat. Here's his comment. Can't wait until the second round to draft a wide receiver. We have to take one of the top guys this year, even if we trade down for London, Olave, or Jamison Williams. I think the Jets need to come away with two wide receivers in this draft. If they're not going to go down the Allen Robinson route, and I'd be surprised if they do it, if they're not going to go down the you know, Amari Cooper route, and that ship has sailed, I think they need to draft two wide receivers. Now, if one's at 10, maybe you don't take one in the second round. But if one's at, you know, late first round trade back in, you know, maybe that means you're in play for one in the second round after all. Or maybe you just love two of these guys so much, you take one at 10 and 35. I won't kill the Jets if they did that either. David says, didn't Devontae Adams decline the franchise tag? He doesn't want to play on the franchise tag, so we could be headed to towards a contentious holdout there. But the Jets aren't going to be able to get Devontae Adams. They're going to have to pay him. Jay, Jay Brooms says, best destination for Watson from the Jets perspective. Um, are you talking about Deshaun Watson or Christian Watson? If you mean Christian Watson, I guess second round would be ideal for the Jets to take him. Deshaun Watson, I mean, I, if he goes to any of the three teams that are left for him, I don't think it's, it impacts the Jets that much. Now, if he goes to the Falcons, they're not going to take a receiver at eight, which could benefit the Jets. If he goes to the Panthers at six, maybe – I, I don't know. I don't think it truly matters, honestly. I don't think the Jets are that impacted by where Deshaun ends up, truth, uh, truthfully. Um, let's see. What about Julio Jones? No, thank you. No, thank you. AB says, I don't think tackle at four is completely off the table if KT's gone. Fant is a free agent after this year, and you can get an edge at 10. It's not completely off the table, A.B. I think it's way less likely than it was a couple of days ago. That's the hunch I get. Paul checks in with a super chat. The way free agency is playing out, looks like edge at four, wide receiver at 10, linebacker and another wide receiver, 35 and 38. Throw defensive tackle in there, too, for the second round as well. And if there's a corner of the Jets lob, don't count that out in the second round. Uh, let's see. Scout says Julio's on the decline. AJ Green money. Julio can't stay on the field. No, thank you. Julio's a diva. Doesn't fit the chemistry. Oh, Juju's a diva. 
Yeah, I, I don't I don't want Juju Smith Schuster. No, thank you. Young says, Do you see the Jets drafting KT and O line or KT and Sauce with four and ten? I think KT and Sauce is more likely than KT and O line, if I had to pick. Beasley just got cut. Should we sign him as a rotational piece? You're gonna have to pay him more to and you have enough slot guys. You brought back Berrios. Braxton Berrios is a younger, more athletic version of Cole Beasley. Let's keep going with your comments and questions here as uh, we react to what has been a very good New York Jets offseason so far. Tracy says, Berrios greater than Beasley. He could be. We're not there yet, but he could be. I'll take Berrios' contract over whatever Beasley is about to get. That's for sure. James says, Jake DM'd you. And do we have to thank Adam Gase for JD? When McCagden got fired, the reports were Gase wanting JD as the Jets GM. I'm not giving Gase any credit because he was horrific. I, I, I blame Christopher Johnson for all the Jets' problems with that. They should have fired McCagden when they fired Bowles. That was a huge mistake. I said it at the time. McCagden was a, a, inept. He never should have been able to make the uh, draft picks that year or sign Le'Veon Bell and, and all these other guys that were way overpaid. That was a huge mistake. It set the Jets back. Now, eventually, they did get Douglas, but they burned an entire 2019 season by not getting Douglas in sooner. They could have hired Douglas after they fired McCagden and Bowles. But that's in the past, and now we move forward. Jennifer says, have we made any cuts yet? Nothing too notable. They'll probably cut Ryan Griffin, Greg Van Roten. There's cuts to be made. V Money says, hey, Jake, I think Olave is this year's Ruggs. What do you think? He will be a bust. Ruggs wasn't a bust, though. He just obviously was a moron and drove 150 miles per hour and killed a person. Big difference there. Ruggs was a pretty good player for the Raiders. He was ascending in his second year before that incident happened out in Vegas. I don't think Olave is a bust. I think he's going to be a very good player. Olave is probably going to be one of the better rookie receivers because he's probably not going to be drafted towards later in the first round, if I had to guess. So if that happens, he's going to go on a better team. Socrates says, if Linderbaum slides past 20, we need to trade up from 35 and grab him. Agreed. I don't think he makes it past 20, though. McGovern is home after this year. I think you mean he's gone. After this year, the, if the Jets wanted to cut McGovern and sign JC Treader, I'd be okay with that too. I think Treader is an upgrade. Uh, Kilted says upgrade at center. Yes or no? I would try to. Do I think McGovern's the opening day center? I do think he is. Uh, Patrick says GVR got lost in Beckton Wilson hurt last year. Needs to go. I think they do end up cutting him, Patrick. So I think he'll be good. What's our current cap situation? According to Connor Hughes, the Jets roughly have about $35 million still to use on the open market. you got to allocate about $13 million to pay your rookie class, so the Jets have cap space left still to use. Memory says, Jets better take a punter at four. Bill Simmons says, it's Socrates, not Socrates. Well, I've been calling him Socrates for a year already, so I don't think I'm going to stop Bill Simmons. The Real J says, Cordell Patterson, a beast. Are we in play for him if he fits the scheme? Probably not because he does similar things that Berrios and Moore do. He's going to cost more. Adam Gay says, Christopher Johnson, best owner's brother in football. Yeah, he hired you, Adam. And as he said at the day you were hired, you're coaching football to where it's going. That's why Adam Gase is employed right now, right? Jets need to upgrade at long snapper. All right. That's one way to look at it. Bradley Bozeman or CJ uh, CJ Treader, both available for the Jets if they want to try and upgrade at center. And they can cut McGovern, and it wouldn't add that much cap space to add one of those guys. PJ says trade for Thielen. Why are the Vikings trading him if they're trying to win with Cousins this year? Ah, another trade proposal that won't happen to get DK Metcalf. Everyone look at Mike's proposal. It will not happen. June the Jet says, this is my last mock prediction at four. Take Sauce Gardner at 10. Garrett Wilson at 35. Watson and at 36, Winfrey. Mm, I don't think they're going to take Sauce at four. I don't think. 
doubling up a wide receiver is tough to project. I don't know if they would do it. It's possible. I don't know if they do it though. Chris says, Jake, where do you your co-host think Deshaun goes? Um, it's a good question. I don't actually know. I'll ask them today. Well, Cody's off today, so I'll ask BK. I think BK probably is going to say New Orleans. I'm going to say Atlanta. Brian says, would Keelan Cole with the receiver at 10 be enough? They would need to then draft another wide receiver if the veteran they're adding is Keelan Cole. What about Carl Nassib? I think Jacob Martin is better than Carl Nassib. He kind of fits what the Jets were doing. The Good says, hit it. That's right. Like this video. All 700 of you watching. I can't thank you guys enough. And to the thousands watching after the fact, I really do appreciate it. We've had record numbers on the channel this week. It's nice to talk about the Jets doing things the right way and not having to complain about losing or not having to complain about all the issues that this franchise has had. They're trending in the right direction. Chaka says, any chance they go KT at four and N'Kobe Dean at 10? There's a chance for KT at four. I would be shocked if they go N'Kobe Dean at 10. I don't think N'Kobe Dean's a top 10 player in this draft. I think he's a first round pick, but I don't think he's going in the top 10. Obi-Wan says, Le'Veon Bell's a free agent. Gee, I wonder why. Cooking with Rick with a super chat. He cuts the line. Douglas filling all the holes so we could draft best available without worrying about positional need. So I'd say you're right, but it's best available at a premium position when you talk about a top five pick. So at number four, I think the Jets would go premium position that's highest on their board over maybe cornerback Sauce Gardner if he's the highest player on their board. Edwin says, think we take a receiver with one of our two picks. I think they take a receiver at 10, Edwin. I don't think they do it at four. I think they could trade out from four and then take a receiver. Frank says, I think Drake London's number one. You're not alone, Frank. A lot of people like Drake London. Scout says, positive vibes. In Joe Douglas, we trust. I trust Joe. I like Joe. We're not done yet. As Kobe Bryant said, job's not finished. Job is not finished for the Jets. Have I missed a super chat here? I hope not. Um, I don't think I have. Let's keep going with your comments and questions. We've gone for over an hour. Uh, can't wait, can't get wife to get Middleton tattoo below her waistline. <laughs> you, you're trying to get your wife to get a tattoo of, uh, good old Ron Middleton, man. I love it. Let's hit it. If it moves, hit it. If it don't move, hit it. And if you're not sure, guess what? Hit it. If you want a tattoo of me, hit it. John says, Uzama officially signed. Great. Looking forward to watching him actually do something at the tight end position we have not seen in a long time, Jeff fans. Win. Get open. Score touchdowns. By the way, Deshaun Watson's agent, David Mulligetta, represents uh, Casey Hayward, who just signed with the Falcons. I don't know what to make of that. I'm just pointing that out for the Texans fans that are watching right now. Garrett says... I think you're quick to d dismiss Devante to us. I mean, I don't think I am. Why would the Packers let him go? They franchised him for a reason. How are the Jets going to get Devante Adams? VR says Dustin Keller was the last decent tight end we had. I agree. I agree. The Jets have not had a decent tight end since Keller, who has not been a Jet in 10 years. Put that in perspective. I mean, the tight ends the Jets have had, it's embarrassing. And Joe did a bad job last year giving Zach Wilson, Ryan Griffin, Daniel Brown, and uh, Tyler Croft to work with. That was unacceptable. At least he learned from it. I'll give Joe Douglas credit. He learns from mistakes he's made on the job. Letting Robbie Anderson go was a mistake. So he brings back Bra Braxton Berrios, who, like Anderson, had great chemistry with his young quarterback. You know, letting, um, you know, not addressing tight end, big mistake. He brings in two quality tight ends that now combine at over 100 catches and eight touchdowns to the tight end room. Douglas, if one thing you could say about the guy, he learns from his mis uh, mistakes, which is encouraging. Jet Sector, any updates on upcoming guests like Will or Cole? Yes, Cole tomorrow, 
Will, I'm sure, next week, some surprise guests as well to recap free agency and look ahead to the NFL draft. Jorge says, you think Cooks stays? You're talking about Brandon Cooks? I don't think the Texans will trade him. Noah says, draft Brian Anderson Jr. I mean, you guys know my thoughts on players from Alabama. I'm okay with it. I'm a Nick Saban fan. Juan says, do you think Matt Araza, number one punter in the draft, is worth a third or fourth round pick? No. Not for the Jets. Maybe for some other team. The Jets took a punter in the, what, sixth round a couple of years ago? They're not drafting another punter. Another question about Julio Jones. Would you sign him since he'll be cut? No, I want nothing to do with Julio Jones. Nothing. Devin wants to know which tight end of the draft is a Jet fan. Is it Rucker? Jeremy Rucker's from Lindenhurst, Long Island, about 25 minutes from where I grew up in Syosset on Long Island. So he's the one who's a Jet fan. Uh, let's see. This one comes in from... Liddy or Ildi? I apologize. I definitely screwed up that name. Jake, I have a prediction. If character concerns are really an issue for KT, I think the Jets go sauce at four. And any of the edge at 10, like Johnson, Walker, Karloftis, Ajabo, what do you think? Not impossible. I still think their preference is get the best pass rusher on the board at number four. KT might not be there at four. In fact, I'm predicting he's not going to be there. Because I think if the Jaguars go Hutchinson 1, the Lions take Thibodeau 2. Texans probably take Icky, and then the Jets are there on the board at number 4. Chris says, Jets need to draft James Cook. I like James Cook. He's obviously related to Dalvin Cook, stud running back of the Vikings. Greg says, why do you think Jet fans are so high on a CB fourth overall? Because people love Sauce Gardner. That's why. He's really good. It's never allowed a touchdown in his life at college. That's why. John says, why do you all say trade for DK, trade for Adams? Why not just say trade for Mahomes? It's honestly the same thing, John. You're right. And next time someone says, hey, trade for DK Metcalf, I'm going to say, yep, the Jets should also trade for Patrick Mahomes. Great point. We got to stop with the DK and the Julio nonsense. It's not happening. I think Jeremy Ruckert's a Bills fan. Uh, there's pictures of him wearing Jets jerseys as a kid. He's not a Bills fan. What? No camel Kyle Hamilton at four. I do not want Kyle Hamilton at four. Chris says, this is funny. Julio Jones is the Blake Cashman of receivers. Yeah, the only difference is Blake Cashman never plays. At least Julio Jones is a future Hall of Famer when he played before the last couple of years he's declined. Uh, let's see. Russia checks in with the super chat here. Zach Wilson touchdown, 25 of them, and then 12 interceptions next year. That'd be a pretty good year, too, for Zach. I think a lot of Jeff fans would sign up for that. Maybe you add, like, four rushing touchdowns there, and that's a pretty good year for Zach Wilson in year two. Um, Let's see. JD is going to make a trade for a wide receiver before the draft. Who's that wide receiver? Arden Key, please. Still possible for the Jets. We know Salah loves them from when they were together with the Niners. Jahan Dotson at 38. I think they need a bigger-sized wide receiver than Dotson. I like Dotson. I just don't know if he's going to be in play for the Jets. Um, Matthew says, do you think the Texans could take Tibbs at three if they got the six from Carolina, then trade above the Giants with us for Akeem or Evan Neal? Maybe. That's an interesting theory, Matt. I think the Texans could even take maybe Hamilton at three and then get the offensive line when they covet at number six. That's in play as well. Bino says, Jake heard Cashman pulled a hammy getting off the plane in Houston, and now he's on IR. I mean, would it be that shocking? Seriously, would it be that shocking given, uh, given Blake Cashman's unfortunate injury history? I don't think so. John says, how about trading 10 and 38 to Detroit to secure – our edge rusher. I don't see it, John. I'll tell you why. The Jets probably like a bunch of these edge rushers in the class, so they're not going to want to trade away two premium picks just to move up two spots to get one. Seems unlikely. It's a good thought, but it seems unlikely. King Joe with the super chat. He cuts the line. If the Jets upgrade at center, 
Who would you like, Bradley Bozeman or C.J. Treader? I believe you mean J.C. Treader, but that's okay. I would take Treader. I like Treader. Guy, the guy, the guy's got qualities of leadership too. He's the NFL PA president. Let's go, uh, Jets from Jets Media. Shout out to Richie from Jets Media. Appreciate him watching uh, today's program here. Matt says the night vlog greater than the morning. Well, Matt, I, I mean, I got to do the shows when I got time to do them. That's that's what it comes down to. Uh, Melvin says Blake Glassman. June, we're going to put you in timeout. Deshaun Watson is not officially going to Atlanta yet. Don't confuse the audience. Um, uh, JC says, what are the Jets doing to address running back? I think they draft a running back in the mid rounds again. They got Michael Carter on round four. I think running backs in play in, in round three, four and five for the Jets. I want, uh, Abram Smith. The kid from Baylor who they coached at the Senior Bowl, converted linebacker, big-time bruiser. I think Pierce from Florida is an awesome prospect as well. And, you know, I'm a fan of the the kid Tyler Algier from BYU. I know the BYU fans are going to love that too. Reunite him with Zach Wilson. Dimitri says, Neil or Tibbs if both available. Thibodeau. Kayvon Thibodeau. Shadow says, is it feasible to get a pass rusher at 4-10 and 10 if they rotate guys? Not impossible, but I think it's unlikely. I'd be very surprised. Jason says, hit the like button. I agree. Smartest point made. Hit the like button down below. Drew says, I'm all for James Cook. Yeah, I like James Cook too. Depends on where he goes. Very good running back class. John Snow is watching. Hello, John. Michelle DeMarvin. Leal. I think you mean DeMarvin Leal from Texas A&M. Yep, could be available in the second round. Cole Thompson is very high on DeMarvin Leal. I, I've heard he could sneak into the late one. Here's the thing. There's there's so many guys that can, quote, sneak into the late one. There's not enough guys that are going to go in the first round. There's not enough. There's only 32 picks in the first round. Some of these guys could be available for the Jets. He's one of them. Harlan says, do you believe in drafting a running back every year? In the mid-rounds, I do. Why not? Um, let's see. David says, what's your take on the Baker situation? How can they repair the relationship? If not, they trade him. What do they do for quarterback? And that sounds like a situation that can't be repaired. You know, when Mortensen comes out yesterday and says they're looking for a adult in the room, that's kind of all you need to know about where things stand right now. I think Baker gets traded somewhere. Indy could be in play. Uh, Seattle could be in play. I've heard. So, We'll see what happens there. But we know Deshaun's not going to Cleveland. But you guys want to laugh? I find it funny that the uh, the Browns want an adult in the room at quarterback, so they're trying to trade for Deshaun Watson, who's facing 22 civil lawsuits of sexual misconduct. But, yeah, they want an adult in the room, okay? Sure, I'll play along. No, they want a better quarterback than Baker Mayfield because Baker's a diva who's not good enough to be a diva. If he was Aaron Rodgers acting the way he does, no one would give a crap, but he's not. He's a good quarterback. He's not a great quarterback. They're sick of it. They want to move on. And, you know, as far as what they do at quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo to Cleveland would make some sense. Ariel says, what are your thoughts on a potential trade for an edge rusher like Daniil Hunter? Depends on cost, but, yeah, sign me up. Sign me up. Nicholas says, what's up, Jake? St. Patrick's Day. Neil the intern. Shout out to Neil. It is St. Patrick's Day. If you're in Houston, go to Griff's Irish Pub for the annual St. Patrick's Day celebration. It's all day. They're going to be open till 2 a.m. I will be stopping by later. i got to support my friends over at Griff's Irish Pub. And, uh, yeah, I'll be broadcasting live today from Rebelry on Richmond. If you're in Houston, come on down and say hello. Jet fans are invited, even if you're a Texans fan or whatnot. We're going to be watching the NCAA tournament, and Deshaun could be traded. Correa could resign. Who knows what the hell is going to happen today in Houston sports on top of March Madness. Chris says, I still want to bring a tight end in the draft. I do too. They should draft the tight end in the third round. They should. Also, I just realized I answered Jon Snow's response to Michelle. Thank you, Jon Snow. And thank you for all you did to restore order in the uh, seven kingdoms. Teddy says, and this is a super chat. What up, Teddy? We definitely will get an edge at either four or ten. 
I'm looking at Thibodeau at four, Walker Johnson at 10. I don't think we need to take an O-line early now, and tight end looks like late rounds. I think tight end looks like third round on, Teddy, because it's such a good class. And then as far as edge at four, I think they go edge at four regardless of who's there. That's my feeling. I don't think they're going to go, you know, Sauce Gardner at four or Kyle Hamilton at four. I don't see it. Uh... Joey R says, by the way, Jake, James Cook is Dalvin Cook's brother. I said that, Joey. I know. I know. Don't worry. I know. I got you. As we continue to break down free agency. Thoughts on Brees Hall? I think the Texans should take him in the second round. I don't think the Jets would take him. 1189 says, Daniil Hunter makes too much money. The Jets don't want to be in cap hell. The Jets will not be in cap hell. The cap is not real. It's a figment of your imagination. It is like the Subway $5 foot long. It is not real. The Jets can manipulate the cap. They got plenty of flexibility. This guy is a beast. I would bring him in. All right. He is a pass rusher at a premium position. Why wouldn't you want him? He's only signed for a couple more years anyway. Why not bring the guy in? Why not? You need good players. John says, would you be shocked if Douglas traded back far in the draft and got two first round picks? I would be because I don't think you're going to get two first round picks um, in a in a trade up from any team this year because I just don't think the quarterback class is that good. You maybe would get a one next year, but two future ones like what the Niners did to move up from twelve to three to get Trey Lance. I don't think that option exists. The real Jay says the Jaguars really messed up the wide receiver market, which is why no good wide receiver is being signed. Yeah, the uh, the the Jaguars. They went full McCagden in free agency, as I like to call it. Cole Thompson's watching. Woo! Go Jacob Martin. Cole will be joining us tomorrow. Jake, who the Texans picking, bruh? Thibodeau, Aquano, Neil, all in play. Lefty Glover says, if we trade for a wide receiver, why not go after DJ Moore? Why is DJ Moore available? You got to ask yourself that, Lefty. Aren't they trying to win in Carolina? Isn't Matt Rule on the hot seat? David says, Jermaine Johnson at four is too high. Not if the Jets love him, right? If the Jets love him, is he too high? They coached him at the Senior Bowl. Was Rucker at the Senior Bowl. He was, and the Jets liked him. That I've been told. Cole Thompson says, they won't be in cap hell. The cap is fake. It's not real. I'm telling you, it's more fake than the $5 footlong promotion. Doesn't exist. Richard says, Carlotta is not a choice for us at 10. He is. He is in play. I think wide receiver is more likely, though, Richard. And I hope you're enjoying your vacation in Putacana. Matt says, the salary cap is like the Fed's money printing. It's all fake. None of it's real. Any smart team can manipulate the cap. Any subways in Houston. Yes, but I'm anti-subway. I'm much more of a Jimmy Johnson, Jersey Mike's guy if I'm going to go sandwiches. Jersey Mike's. Or Jersey, yeah, no, Jersey Mike's I love. It's a little pricey. Jimmy John's I love. It's maybe not as good pound for pound as Jersey Mike's, but the efficiency in which they make the sandwich is worth showing up, and it's cheaper. So it kind of depends what you want. It's kind of like which wide receiver for the Jets do you want a tent? You know, do you want the the big bodied wide receiver that can make the contested catch? Maybe you're a Drake London guy. Do you want the all around solid and reliable option? Maybe you're a Garrett Wilson guy. So. Jersey Mike's and Jimmy John's are a lot like which wide receiver you want for the Jets to take at number 10. How's that for an analogy? Just put on my con cowherd hat to make that one. Matthew says Jersey Mike's goaded. There used to be one within walking distance to my apartment here in Houston and it closed and that crushed me. So now I go to Jimmy John's a lot more. Firehouse is the goat. They opened up a firehouse subs my senior year at Ithaca College and it changed the game. It really did. Edgar says, do you think Carl Lawson will be ready for the season and he will start? Yes, he will be ready and he will start. Absolutely. Richard says, Jake, do a remote show here. If you could get my bosses at ESPN Houston to send me to Punta Cana for a remote show, Richard, I'd be happy as hell to do it. Dan Goldstein says, no to Jordan Davis at 10. They're not going to take him at 10. Let's be real. Carl says, what happened to the rumors connecting the Jets and Saquon? They weren't real. A lot like the salary cap, they were not real. The Jets will not trade for Saquon Barkley, nor should they. That'd be an awful idea. 
Jake, you ever hit the Quiznos on Woodbury Road back in the day? Oh, yeah. I was a big uh, Quiznos guy way back. I also, I used to be a Subway guy, but I, I after Subway, you know, I, I had enough of their advertising for the $5 foot long. It's for Gazy, it's a woozy, it's not real. All right, so I'm anti-Subway now. And Quiznos, RIP to Quiznos. Are there any Quiznos left? John Walker says, I go to the Ithaca Firehouse. I'm talking about the Ithaca Fire Department or the Ithaca Firehouse subs? Both are very important. Uh... John says, I keep seeing the Jets might want to draft Jahan Dotson in the second round. Do you think that'd be a good move? Eh, I think they I think they need a different type of wide receiver than what he is. I like him, but we'll see. Uh DeBella's Godfather, everything rules the sub world. Yeah, DeBella's also has very good subs, too. Also, for those who have been to Wegman's, Wegman subs, honestly, top five subs you can get. A Wegman sub is phenomenal. I used to go to the Ithaca Wegmans all the time. Seamus says, come out to Guam for a show. I got you, homie. All right, I'll come out to Guam with you, Seamus. Remember Blimpies. Blimpies, another good sub option. Richard says, Saquon is washed up. He's not washed. He just can't stay on the field. He's a very good player when he plays. I just don't want anything to do with him. Tracy says, I'm in Florida. We do public subs or Wawa. I mean, Wawa is phenomenal, too. Anyone that's been to Jersey or Philly for the Wawa, Wawa is outstanding as well. WWE Take Now says, Jake, recent mock draft showing the Kobe Dean dropping to the second. I've seen him in the third, believe it or not. Any truth behind this? He could be available in the second. He's not going to make it to the third round. Drake London would be a solid pickup. He would. Matthew says, I take Pickens in the second. I'm not against that either. Joey R says, Jake, please play Ron Middleton for everyone that hasn't hit the like yet. All right, Joey, if you want it, who am I to not give you what you want with some Ron Middleton. Who am I to not give you this if man? If it moves, hit it. If it don't move, hit it. And if you're not sure, guess what? Hit it. Yeah. There we go. Saquon grew up a Jets fan. Uh, that doesn't mean the Jets should trade assets from. Kenneth Walker at 35. Too high to take a running back for the Jets when you have Michael Carter. Not a good use of premium resources. You take a running back round three and on, I'm good with it. Next wide receiver needs to be a red zone threat. Yeah, it just needs to be someone that's better than what they currently have. All right? We like more. We like Davis. We like Berrios. You got to add to it. They're not done. Blue Line Deli, great heroes. Hashtag go Isles. Yeah, if you've ever been to Blue Line Deli in Huntington, you know the greatness of Blue Line Deli. They are incredible. Great customer service. Islander fans, but they're just big hockey fans as well. You walk in there, Blue Line Deli, can't say enough good things about the, uh, that place. I was there when I was back in New York in December. Just an incredible spot. Uh, Garrett Wilson at 10, please. Julio to the Jets. Once and for all, let's end the Julio conversation. He's not good. He doesn't fit the Jets' path to improving next year. He can't stay on the field. Chris says, Uzama meeting with Zach Wilson in Nashville next week where he's working with Corey Davis. I have not heard that, Chris, but if that's true, that's awesome, and that doesn't surprise me. <laughs> I heard JD's cousin is Harry Potter. He's, he's working his magic. Ron Middleton, happier with his tight end room. I mean, Ron Middleton, unannounced, mentioned CJ Uzama at the Senior Bowl as a tight end he really likes. So, yeah, I think Ron Middleton is pumped up about JD signing uh, – Uzama, and then adding Conklin to that, that's a home run move by the New York Jets. Quiznos went belly up in 2011. Well, there you go. That makes sense. Jets forever. Garrett Wilson is not good. You're not good, Jets forever. Um, <laughs> Knowing Woody Johnson, he'd hope we'd grab London. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah that, that's, that's well done. Well done. Yusuf with the Obvious statement of the year, but we appreciate it. And he's right. We need weapons of protection for Zach, period. Yes. Yes. And more yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. All right. 1189 says, do the Jets re-sign Keelan Cole if he's available in a month? Wouldn't be crazy. Wouldn't be crazy. I think you'd get him less than what you paid him this past year at $5 million. So it's possible. All right. With that being said, we've gone for almost an hour and a half. A quick reminder that if you want in on the contest to win the 
size large, important to note, they run a little big, even though it's a large. Number eight, Elijah Moore jersey. You must be following me on Twitter and Instagram. You must smash the like button down below for this video. You must smash the subscribe button to the channel, and then I will enter you in to the contest. I'm making a list of names. I'm going to pull from that list. And at the end of the month, I will mail you this Elijah Moore jersey. So that's the giveaway for the end of the month. Appreciate all of you for your constant support. This video was a ton of fun. We'll continue to have daily content throughout the week. And Cole Thompson will definitely be joining us tomorrow morning to do an updated New York Jets mock draft post first wave of free agency. My name is Jake Asman. This has been the Jake Asman Show. If you're in Houston, come out to... Reverie on Richmond or come out to Drift Bar in the Heights tomorrow, but we're going to be at Reverie on Richmond later today from 3 to 7 Central Time. Talk to you guys soon. Please like and subscribe. You guys know the drill. I don't need to tell you anymore. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back with more videos throughout the week. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Woo! See ya.